welcome students to this first lecture on some preliminaries which we need to know so essentially this we i am supposing that we know and i am just giving you the basic facts okay so first of all we need to know what a vector space is right and of course i am assuming that we know but still it's just a revision that you are looking at a set uh, of course a non empty set so uh, v you have a non empty set non empty set right and this set we will put some operations on it so first of all this non empty set with a binary operation okay binary operation which we will call uh, addition addition and then we will also have a binary function on it okay and a binary function on it binary function which we will call as scalar multiplication multiplication so the set along with these two um, operation and a binary function and it has to satisfy certain assumptions huh? and it satisfies certain assumptions satisfies the below assumptions so what are the assumptions assumptions okay so first of all associativity is there so what is this it is basically u plus v plus w you can actually write it as u plus v plus w okay that is associativity okay right now this is associativity of vector addition okay now we have something called a commutativity commutativity is this u plus v will be v plus u this is commutative vt okay of uh, scale, um, vector addition okay and then we will have a identity element which we are basically going to call it as a zero so identity element is zero and what is the property so there exists uh, an element zero we will call it as zero okay uh, in v uh, and we will call it as zero zero such that v plus 0 equals to 0 plus v yes and this is equals to v this should hold for all v in the vectors in the sets v right so you, if you take any element of the set if you add 0 with it uh, doesn't really matter in which way you are adding these always will do a 0 this is the identity element okay identity element and then of course you have the inverse right inverse with respect to addition vector addition so for every for every element v in v okay you will have there exist minus v in v such that v plus of minus v so plus is always given to you right so that is going to give you the identity element zero okay so that is the inverse so if you have a element v you have always have a inverse minus v right now we so these are the four properties which addition so with respect to addition it should satisfy and then the other properties which we need is the uh, uh, scalar multiplication right so a times bv should look like ab times v and what is ab here a and b is in r or whatever field you are choosing for this course we are always going to choose the set over r right so that is your scalar so so here i'm saying scalar multiplication it means the elements which we are multiplying with the vectors the vectors will be from element v so the scalars will come from r okay it can come from c also but for this course at least now we will always consider it to be r okay so the scalar field is r and then you have this property that a times bv so bv is an element of v right so when you multiply it by a it means that ab times v okay and then you have this property that identity element with respect to the scalar multiplication right so 1 times v is equals to v okay so this is the multiplicative identity actually multiplicative identity identity okay and then 
you also have distributive property. Distributive property is A times U plus V is A times U plus A times V. So, this is distributive. Distributive. Okay. And then you also have distributivity of scalar multiplication with respect to the addition. So, that will be given by A plus B times V is A times V plus B times V. Okay. So, essentially here you see I am assuming A to be in R and uv is in v okay r can be in uh, any field f you can replace it with there and again here ab is in r and v is in v for any v in v right? doesn't really matter which one this is uh, this is also distributivity but this is distributivity of scalar multiplication with respect to the field addition okay so these are the properties and this uh, I, I, as i am assuming you already know this stuff okay so let's uh, move on to the next part so essentially what we have is let's look at some examples which we um, can build out of this okay so we always know that the first example which we can consider say example a is of course r right so r over r so i am choosing v to be r the real number real and uh, then uh, the um, the field which you are choosing is of course r then r over r this is a vector space vector space right and okay so another one of course you have v let's say you are you have rn so this is rn over r okay that is also a vector space this is also a vector space and we call it a real vector space um, because it is over r okay so r n over r that you can do and of course uh, so these are the these are the preliminary vector spaces which you already know um, i'm assuming that and of course uh, there is another vector space which is very important in our context which is p n of r what is p n of r so this is the set of all those polynomials what are the polynomials so basically you are looking at this thing a0 plus a1 of x plus a n of x power n right and here a not a n these i am choosing it from r right so this is a polynomial over r that is the the coefficients are basically chosen over r and this um, is all possible uh, polynomials of order less than equal n okay so of so this is basically polynomials polynomials of order less than equal n okay and with this we can we you can of course see that this is also a vector space is a vector space vector space okay and once you have this we can also talk about what is the dimension of all these spaces right so what is the definition of dimension let's just go over this quickly dimension of a vector space So, we will define the number of linearly independent, linearly independent, dependent uh, elements, elements, so this is the minimum, the minimum number, okay, the minimum, let us just say, put it this way, the minimum number of linearly independent elements required to span v okay so what does this mean let's understand this first of all what is linearly independent elements okay so linearly independence first of all we have to understand this right linearly independent then what is it so essentially you are basically looking at a subset of v right so given a vector space v you are looking at a subset so what is the subset let's just call it s and the subset is given by uh, some elements of v let's just write it like this v1 v2 vn okay b a subset of v clear now we will call we call call vi this set is linearly independent linearly 
independent when is it then if if you if you look at this relation so that is c1 times v1 plus cn times vn equals to 0 this will always imply that every c1 every ci is that is c1 equals to c2 equals to c3 equals to cn this has to be 0 so essentially uh, as an example you can of course think of it that they do not depend on each other so essentially if you just think of two elements v1 and v2 so as an example let's just look at it you see if v1 and v2 v1 and v2 are linearly independent what does it mean linearly independent if i say something like this that will imply v1 c1 times v1 plus c2 times v2 equals to 0 cannot be written as v1 equals to c2 by c1 times v2 right you can't write it like this you can't write it like this because for linearly independence you have c2 and c1 both has to be zero so this division is not possible okay so what does that mean it means that one vector should not be a scalar multiple of another and what does that mean it means that let's say v1 and v2 are vectors so if you think if one thinks one thinks that they are vectors in rn right vectors in r2 let's say in r2 let's say so v1 and v2 are vectors in r2 let's just say though so v1 is not um, a scalar multiple of v2 it means that they are not parallel to each other right so if they are parallel to each other it means that they are scalar multiples and in that case v1 and v2 are linearly dependent so if they are parallel they are linearly dependent and in this case since you can see that one is cannot be linearly dependent of another then they are not uh, um, parallel to each other right so that's your linear independent and now the thing is the minimum number of so what is the dimension of vector space this is the definition which we are going to use we are going to use the minimum number of linearly independent elements required to span v right okay so what does that mean it means that uh, what is span of v so let's just define that also span of v okay so one thing i must say you see i am skipping most of these uh, concepts because i know that um, all of you know this thing okay i'm just uh, telling you the basics in, in case you have some forgot or something okay so what is span of v span of v is this so basically given any element let's say v in v okay so what happens is you can actually have a set okay so let's say s is the set this s huh? let's just say this s which i defined here this s spans v if any element v can be written as summation ci vi is it okay so basically i equals to 1 to m doesn't matter what m is huh? m is some n so basically you can take um, some elements of this set and after that you can you know combine them to form any element of this uh, initial set v and then we call uh, that s spans v okay and it doesn't have to be linearly independent you see it can be more than that okay it doesn't really matter but the thing is what um, it means is basically if you are given uh, some elements uh, with the help of those elements you can linearly combine those elements to um, produce uh, any element of your uh, original space v okay that's your span okay so and if you have the minimum number of element which is required to span of um, to span v then we call that as the dimension of a vector space so for example let's say a example the dimension of r as you know is 1 okay why because any element uh, uh, let's say r in r can be written as r equals to r times 1 right okay so Oh, what is your basis element here so what is the set which actually spans are the set will only contain one okay so the basis set okay let's just call it s that will only contain the element one 
okay and then again let's say what is the dimension of rn in that case dimension of rn of course it is n right and what is the basis element basis let's say let's call that basis element is see what happens is uh, let's just uh, try to find out what is the basis huh? okay so any element let's say v is in rn can be written as v equals to v1 1 0 0 plus v2 0 1 0 plus vn 0 0 1 okay so the nth element is 1 so here v the if the coordinate of v is given by v1 v2 vn we can write it like this right v can be written like this so basically you see if i denote these things 1 0 0 as e1 so let's just denote it as e1 this as e2 this as en then this is nothing but summation v i e i right and then you can see that and please prove this huh? so th please check this part check that there cannot there cannot be not be n minus 1 linearly independent number of elements number of elements which can span which can span span v right okay so essentially what is the basis element uh, here basis contains e1 e2 en once you prove this and then the dimension will be n okay right so similarly you can check so please check this part that the dimension of pn of r is going to be n plus 1 and why is that because you can see that the basis element let's just call the basis element this set as uh, so basically it will contain this element 1 x x square and x power n you see this element all of this if you combine it together this will actually produce first of all you have to show this is linearly independent and then you can uh, once you show that you can show that this can actually span any element of this set so there uh, basically you can show that this is going to be the basis of pn of r right and this is very important for us this is very important for us okay so why it is important okay so here um, if this is the first example which i think is going to be a little different than what you have uh, known till now about vector spaces so d an example of vector space okay so first of all i will start with um, the interval i let's just call it as a b so in most of this course whenever i am saying i is an interval just think of it as a uh, closed bounded set a b so this is a closed bounded set closed and bounded and bounded interval right interval in r interval in r and of course you guys know that this is nothing but a compact set compact set in r right compact set in r okay right now we define okay you define cab what is cab cab we define it as define it as the set of all set of all continuous continuous functions okay continuous functions in ab so the function is defined on a b sorry on a b okay and then we call those as c a b so basically you take all those functions together and you form a set this is called c a b now this i can actually show that this is going to be a vector space okay and what is the addition and the multiplication so basically what i mean is this see uh, if you start with two elements f and g in c a b right if you start with two elements then f plus g the um, the addition okay will be defined it like this see this x is from i right okay so a plus g times x we will we can define it like this f of x plus g of x okay you can check that this uh, operation actually satisfies uh, all the properties of vector space so that is your first one and the second one is c times f if you want to define it so you can define it like this c times f of x okay so please check this part check that these two operations operations on cab cab 
forms a vector space vector space over r okay over r why because here c is in r and f is in c a b you do realize that you see i am i am saying this is a vector right c a b is a set of all continuous functions on a b okay you see i am not i am saying that any element of this set is a vector okay so these are actually functions continuous functions right but we are calling them as vectors okay since um, this actually satisfies all the properties of a vector space so we call we can call them as vectors right okay now one important thing is this see uh, okay for, for and uh, okay what are the examples let's just look at some examples of uh, cab some elements of cab so of course if you if you define uh, let's say f1 of x to be exponential functions exponentials right exponential x or any functions which is like the you know proper trigonometric functions so sines cosines so let's say sin x okay so that can also be uh, element of this set and then of course you also have the polynomials right so uh, let's just write it like c naught plus c1 x plus cn x power n right x is so sorry x is in from c a b x is in a b and c i is, is from r right so this is a polynomial any polynomial that it will also be a continuous function so if you do not know this please i mean uh, what you can do is please check this part check that f1 f2 and f3 belongs to belongs to c a b c a b okay right so this forms a vector space very nice okay right now the thing is this that's the vector space good now can you can we talk about the basis of this basis of c a b basis of c a b okay so what is the basis of cab see cab is a very different set than all of this whatever i have defined r rn pn of r why because the thing is this is an example of a infinite dimensional vector space okay so basis of cab mm, uh, what is the basis this this is the question so basically what the dimension we can say dimension of cab of cab is infinite infinite okay so this question is uh, out of the context for this course but basically what i'm trying to say is what does it mean it means that there does not exist there does not exist okay so sorry let, let me just put it uh, there does not exist any finite any finite subset okay subset of cab cab which is linearly independent okay linearly independent let's just call it li linearly independent this is how i'm going to write in this course okay because it saves time and you know i don't want to write so much so li okay so basically what it means is you cannot get a finite subset of cab okay so you cannot get a finite collection of continuous functions which are linearly independent and which spans cab which spans cab okay so what i mean by this vaguely speaking or not very mathematically speaking intuitionally it means that uh, if you if uh, you cannot have a finite collection of continuous functions defined on closed interval a b such that you can span any element of c a b with those right finite combinations what i mean okay so and uh, how do you prove such a thing so this please you have to do this part yourself so you check this see uh can you give me a subset of cab so for, first of all any subset of cab you can think of it as pn of r is a subset of cab right is a subset of cab for any n in n right 
so it doesn't really matter all polynomials okay uh, it doesn't really matter if the first order polynomial second order polynomial nth order polynomial whatever it is they are all continuous functions sorry uh, i have to write it like this pn of r um, defined on ab okay so defined on ab okay okay uh, so basically any polynomials defined on closed interval ab okay that is always contained in cab right that you can of course see because any polynomials are continuous functions okay now so and since this works for any n in n okay doesn't really matter what n is so you can see that of course um, the dimension of cab is going to be infinite it cannot be possibly finite okay so uh, but the thing is this is not a precise way of putting it i mean this is just an intuition okay and please i want you to do that uh, you just show that um, the dimension of cab is infinite okay now what sort of infinite countable uncountable we don't know that uh, we don't need to know that right now but the thing is you just need to know that the basis is uh, the number of elements on the basis is infinite right okay right now is, do, can can we you know produce more uh, vector spaces out of it of course we can okay so we define this so define we define ck ab what is ck ab ck ab is the set of all set of all k continuously differentiable continuously differentiable differentiable function on ab okay right so uh, you can define it so basically what i am doing is what do i mean by continuous differentiable so first of all as an example let's say what is c1 c1 of ab it means we are looking for a function f okay from ab to r such that the function is continuous okay f is continuous okay see ck is k continuous differentiable function right so uh, um, up till k order so basically it is like uh, so c1 is up till first order okay continuous differentiable so it means that f is continuous a prime exists and is and is continuous right so that is what it means that uh, that uh, the first derivative will also exist and it is going to be continuous we call it a c1 so similarly c2 also you can think of it as the second derivative so f is continuous a prime exists a prime will be continuous and then f double prime will exist and f double prime has to be continuous and then you have c1 of ab yeah and uh, as you can see, i mean you can guess that uh, this ck of ab these sets are always going to be infinite dimensional so this also you need to check that ck of ab is infinite dimensional dimensional okay right so uh, this is basically uh, the ideas of vector spaces which you are going to need okay now uh, another question i want to pose here and i want you to understand this that um, is there any inclusion between all these spaces ck's okay so essentially what i mean is this you see you can actually see that cab is the biggest space right so basically what i mean is let's say c1 of ab and cab what is the relation between this see if a function is continuously differentiable once continuously differentiable it means it is going to be continuous right so the continuous function space is actually bigger right so c1 of ab is contained in so let me put it this way ck of ab ab is contained in sorry ck plus 1 of ab is contained in ck of ab for any k a equals to 0 1 2 right okay and similarly uh, you can see that right because if it is if the k derivative exists and it is going to be continuous um, then k minus 1 derivative also exists and it is continuous so basically one is included in another right and uh, we can also define this you can also define 
C infinity of a b C infinity of a b and this we will define in our course for our course I will define it to be the intersection of k equals to 0 to infinity C, sorry this is intersection of all C n okay C n of a b okay so n is in n essentially n union 0 Okay, so basically what I am trying to say is this, you take all C k's and you take the intersection of that, that will give you C infinity. So, this we will call it as a set of smooth functions. Okay, uh, so with this we are going to conclude the lecture, but before I do that, just a quick question, there exist elements in C A B which are not in C1 of A B. Okay. Yeah. And one small details also which I missed and I should add that part also that uh, see here this I am using all this inclusion as a part of subset okay but you can also define something called a subspace right this you already know but still let me just do it subspace so basically you have a set v1 subset of v okay so given a vector space v this is given okay v1 uh, is called called a subspace subspace if and this is the easy way of doing it that given v1 and v2 in v1 okay so um, okay uh, maybe i should write it like this one sector let me put it this way v and w in v1 will imply v plus w is in v1 and c times v in v1 uh, sorry v in v1 and c in r sorry c in r will imply right c times v is in v1 okay so if these two properties are there so of course if it is v in v1 v and w is in v1 it has to be in also in v but basically what i am trying to say is this the v1 inherits the properties of um, you know the scalar multiplication and the vector addition those two uh, operations those two binary operations the, the those the properties are inherited by v1 also and then we call it a vector so v1 v1 will form is also a vector space also a vector space right also a vector space and then we call it a vector subspace of v uh, is also a vector space uh, over uh, whatever the field is let's say here uh, the original field is in r right vector space over r r and we call it and we call it call it a vector subspace subspace okay of v yeah and as an example of course you can see that uh, let's say c1 of a b is a vector subspace of c a b right it's a vector subspace okay so this is a subspace subspace okay and of course you can also see that let's say this space um, defined v1 to be this space c infinity okay uh, so you don't have to write c1 so let's just define c infinity of a b that is also is also a subspace subspace of c a b okay now one uh, so question and this is where we are going to end the lecture one question is this can you find can you find a finite dimensional subspace finite dimensional subspace of c a b okay so that is the question and with this question uh,